Good morning everybody. Welcome back and welcome back to my channel The Flying Sprout. So it's been a while since I posted a video uh, and I will explain that but I'll do that in a separate video to this one. Um, but this today as you would have noticed by the thumbnail and the intro that I'm actually on the Welsh coastal path. Um, I'm not doing the whole thing, I'm actually out with my family um, the four chaps that did the coast to coast with me and the South Downs Way, we're here with our families, children, wives, fiancés, girlfriends, partners, and we're here for two weeks. And sorry, I'm being distracted by that view, and I don't know if the camera does it justice, but it's pretty lovely. So we're out here on a family two weeks camping, uh, walking, and I'm doing a bit of spear fishing because that's another one of my hobbies. Although that's proving not to be successful because the water visibility is rubbish. But uh, we're actually gonna, we're actually camping on a place called Dinas Island. It isn't, but well, it is designated an island, but it's because there's marshland in between that sort of partially cuts it off. So that's what gives it its name, Dinas Island. And it's in Pembrokeshire. We're staying at a place called Dinas Island Farm Campsite. It's, the only campsite on the actual island and we are doing a day hike today with all the family to from Dinas Island to Newport um, taking in a few of the coves and the beaches along the way which I shall show you um, you already would have seen in the intro one of the beaches that's actually uh, there's two beaches on Dinas Island and that's one of them I'm not going to attempt to pronounce it and uh, butcher the name and insult the Welsh so I shall put the name up on the screen if I haven't done so already um, the walk I think is about nine miles ish um, so nothing too strenuous a few up and downs but it's nice to actually be on the Welsh coastal path I have done some of it before in sections but before I did um, started my YouTube channel um, I've seen quite a few hikers today, some are section hiking it and some are doing the whole path. Um, the path I think started in, it was launched in 2012 and it runs from Queen's Ferry through to Padstow. It's 870 miles long and it's the first coastal path in the world that runs the whole length of the country. So there's a few interesting facts there for you. Um, if I remember, I'll try and take a little bit of footage of the campsite, but if any of you are interested in section hiking or walking the whole coast to coast, um, we've seen quite a few backpackers come into Dinas Lion campsite because you essentially go from the beach you've just saw in the opening um, credits, you go round the island and then to a beach the other side. And the campsite's dead in the middle, so it's a perfect campsite to, um, to plan a stop for. Um, if you're going to section hike or walk the whole thing. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> so as we've come over that bridge on that secluded beach, which I hopefully put the name up for, um, that river or stream, brook, um, runs, if you can see behind me, um, you come across the bridge um, and then rather than going straight up the coastal pass which we're just about to go up to in a minute 
uh, if you turn inland there's a little side trip and you would have seen um, the waterfall um, footage and stepping stones and you'll notice there was uh, some footage there of Lou and Ollie standing just on a rock in front of the um, waterfall and Lou's joined us for these two weeks he's Ollie's partner and she's uh, joined us from Australia so um, she nearly went in which would have been nice if I covered that on video but unfortunately uh, she saved herself but hey ho would have made good footage another cove So the eager-eyed among you and those of you that watched my coast to coast video will notice that I'm sporting a new cap. So when I was at the Honister uh, Bothy or the Bothy just above Honister Slate Mind you notice that we were filled to water and I took you into the Bothy to show you the uh, inside and when I come out and I filled with water I put my hat down and then went off without it and left my North Face hat there so I was pretty upset because I really liked that hat and of course it was really hot as well so that was a real shame but you'll also if you've watched the day two video I think it is that I mentioned that um, the trail always provides and it's a bit of a saying that I've picked up from other hikers and something I believe in because the first day we needed water and we found a farmer that was kind enough to help us with water day two we needed sun cream and one of the chefs in the pub gave us a whole bottle and so it's a saying that i always use and if you notice on there it's got a picture of a mountain and it says the trail will provide which was kindly bought for me for my father's day present as a replacement by my son sam sam say hello 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 if you're doing the welsh coastal path Obviously there are campsites dotted along the way and I just bumped into a hiker that's doing the whole coastal path and he last night missed his campsite by about a mile and a half and ended up while camping on um, Newport Sandy Beach which is quite open and exposed so I would have thought that would have been quite difficult from a stealth point of view but you've obviously seen a couple of the coves that we've um, we've been into on the way to Newport and um, they're quite secluded and they're very private so um, they are stones so you would uh, if you've got a freestanding tent like I have um, and then use the stones to uh, weight out your your guys and your pegging points then you could either while you could wild camp on there you could bivy on there if you've got bivy um, so there are places um, in those coves that you could and there's the odd field that you could probably pull a sneaky wild camping if you're careful um, but there are stretches that um, there doesn't seem to be there seems to be quite narrow paths and doesn't seem to be anywhere that you wild camp so it's something you probably need to consider if you're going to do the uh, either section hike or do the whole of the coastal path um, but it is lovely walking the coastal paths it's nice to walk the mountains um, and get in the elevation but there's something nice about having the sea on one side the countryside on the others there's great views and 
it's very un it's a very undulating path it's not like you're you know going up for an hour and a half when you're you know climbing a big peak so it's quite nice really because uh, they're just short bursts of ascent and uh, descent but it is it is stunning and is beautiful however I would imagine that if you're walking this in the uh, in bad weather then you are pretty exposed in places and um, I would imagine could be quite a bit of a miserable existence so I'll just stop here for a minute that's Newport so not too far now so and you'll see over there it's very popular but low tide lots of people park their cars on the beach we're not going that far we're going to go down to the harbour there and then into the I guess town this is a very small town okay so we've been into Newport we've had our ice cream got some meat from the local butchers support the local economy for our barbecue this evening and I just thought I'd mention that <clears throat> if you're doing the self um, the Welsh coastal path sorry you come down this looks like you almost come down this slipway and I'll show you behind me but at high tide this is actually the water comes up to here so you can't get through but if I take you forward there is easy to miss a sign and if I can show you there um, can you see the sign where is the sign there's the sign uh, that's an alternative route so you can go up these steps behind me and then it takes you up over there and then you can uh, haven't got a wage of wade yourself through so and I'm sure it's signposted if you're coming the other way as well um, but that's something to note if you're going through Newport um, that there are obviously a couple of different routes depending on the tide levels okay so Another grid reference. So this is Genus Island, which obviously is owned by the National Trust. And so that goes all the way around. And just up there is the trig point. Uh, and so essentially it goes from this beach all the way around the island and down to the other beach. So, but um, I'm not going that way. I'm going through this where well, it says private because this is owned by the farmer who works I guess or manages the land for the National Trust um, and this cuts through to the campsite and I will if I remember now put up a short bit of footage um, of the campsite it's not very big it's not plush it's basic I guess but it's got everything you need uh, no electric charging points for those of you that are backpacking so I think I'm going to wrap it up there I don't know how long this is going to be I've taken quite a bit of footage probably far more than I need so I'm going to have to be a bit strict with my editing but I guess it's been a while so I got a bit carried away I'll put a link below for the campsite a link below for the Welsh coastal path and I'll put view ranger in there if I remember so you can have a look I'm not sure exactly how far it's been today um, I'm guessing eight ish miles maybe um, who knows thank you very much for watching I just need to get through this gate um, thank you very much for subscribing as well and um, I shall see you later and I shall catch you on the next one. See you later. Take care. Bye bye.